This meeting of the Senate Judiciary Committee will come to order. Today we have four judicial nominees, two U.S. Attorney nominees, two U.S. Marshal nominees, the nominee to head the Administrative Conference of the United States, and two bipartisan bills uh, on the subject of protecting children against exploitation. S-3538, the Earn It Act of 2022, introduced by Senators Graham and Blumenthal, and S-3103, the Eliminating Limits to Justice for Child Sex Abuse Victims Act, introduced by myself and Senator Blackburn. I will focus my opening remarks on one of the nominees, and I'm glad that Senator Blackburn is present because I'm going to speak about the nomination of Andre Mathis, nominated to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. I will then turn to the ranking member, uh, Chuck Grassley, before we proceed to vote on judicial nominees in the order listed on the agenda, and then turn to the bills. As we've done at previous markups, I ask members uh, to wait to comment on a particular nominee until that nominee is up for consideration, and I will certainly recognize anyone who wishes to speak at that time. And be mindful of the length of your remarks as a courtesy to other members of the committee, and so that we can have time to discuss the two bills that are pending before the committee today. Turning to today's agenda, I, we will consider Andre Mathis nominated to the Sixth Circuit. I want to address three points about his nomination. Consultation, qualifications, and Tennessee support. As I understand it, the primary objective to Mr. Mathis' nomination relates to consultation. And while I, of course, respect those who have a difference of opinion, the record, I think, shows a meaningful effort at consultation between the White House and the two Tennessee Senators. Let me lay out the timeline. May 15th, 2021, Judge Bernice Donald of the Sixth Circuit announces her intent to take senior status upon the confirmation of her successor. Two weeks later, June 4th, 2021, the White House Counsel, President Biden's White House Counsel's Office, reached out to the offices of Senators Blackburn and Haggerty to discuss this vacancy. At that time, the White House signaled it, it, its interest in Andre Mathis. Importantly, the White House also requested the Senator's views on Mr. Mathis and any additional candidates they might propose. The White House also made Mr. Mathis available personally to meet with Tennessee Senators. I have never seen that in my experience where a nominee at that stage was made available, but they did. On June 17, 2021, the senators asked their counsels to meet with uh, Mr. Mathis personally. On July 6, 2021, Senator Blackburn's staff emailed the White House copying Senator Haggerty's staff, confirming that they had met with Mr. Mathis and noting that they had enjoyed the conversation. Notably, the email did not take a position on Mr. Mathis's candidacy. Staff for the two senators proposed that the White House consider another person, Judge Camille McMullen, for the vacancy. In the intervening months, the White House did just that. They not only reviewed her record, they met with her personally and interviewed her. In November 2021, a few days before his nomination, the White House contacted the staff for both Tennessee senators and let them know that the White House had chosen Mr. Mathis to be their nominee. On November 18, 2021, the President formally nominated Mr. Mathis. Now, as I understand it, before the date on Mathis' formal nomination, the Tennessee senators had not indicated to the White House that they would oppose his nomination. They had recommended that the White House consider their candidate, but they never told the White House that Mr. Mathis was unacceptable. With respect to my colleagues from Tennessee, the record of communication and correspondence around this vacancy makes it clear that the White House did engage in meaningful consultation. It is true the President did not ultimately nominate the Tennessee Senator's choice, Judge McMullen, but that was the decision for the President to make. I want to put this issue of consultation in historical context. Then Chair Chuck Grassley spoke at a markup on November 30th, 2017 about his decision to proceed with circuit nominees even without a blue slip from home state senators. And he said, a negative or unreturned blue slip will not necessarily prevent a hearing unless the White House failed to consult with home state senators. 
But in fact, in the matter of Andre Mathis, the Biden White House did consult with home state senators. In a November 2017 floor speech, then Chair Grassley said, and I quote, a senator can't use a blue slip to block a nominee because it's not the person the senator would have picked. Under Senator Grassley's stated standard, the fact that the president chose to nominate Mr. Mathis is not a legitimate reason to block a nomination. Finally, let me note that the consultation undertaken by the, Biden, by the Biden White House far exceeded the consultation afforded by President Trump to several of my Democratic colleagues. True enough, I was able to work with the Trump White House personally to settle on two Seventh Circuit nominees, but it wasn't the case for many of my Democratic uh, colleagues who had vacancies in their own states, including members of this committee. Think about what Senators Booker and Menendez face with the Third Circuit vacancy. In a 2018 letter, then Chair Grassley uh, received a letter from the New Jersey Senators who wrote, the White House did not seek our input in any process related to the selection of Mr. Mady for the Third Circuit vacancy. And despite that lack of consultation, the committee proceeded with the hearing and a vote on Mr. Mady's nomination. Mr. Mady received unanimous Republican support in the committee and unanimous Republican support on the floor. Think also about what Senators Cortez Masto and Rosen faced. On September 18, 2019, the Nevada Senators announced the formation of a bipartisan commission to vet candidacies for a vacancy in the Ninth Circuit. Two days later, two days later, the White House announced it was, it was still going to nominate Lawrence Van Dyke for that vacancy, even though Mr. Van Dyke had, had, did not even live in the state of Nevada. Numerous other Democrats on this committee faced similar situations. If senators on this committee oppose Mr. Mathis on the merit, so be it. But this much is clear. The White House did engage in meaningful con consultation. That consultation exceeds much of what we saw under President Trump. And consistent with the standard established by then-Chair Grassley and continued by Chair Graham, we will proceed with a vote on his nomination. Speaking of Mr. Mathis' merits, I would urge my colleagues to look at his record, his qualifications, and his Tennessee support. Born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, attended the University of Memphis for college and law school, stayed in his hometown where he practiced law ever since, litigated hundreds of civil cases, defended approximately 150 criminal cases as a member of the Criminal Justice Act panel in his district. For those unf unfamiliar with that act, it means that Mr. Mathis undertook court-appointed representation for indigent defendants never refusing an appointment other than when there was a conflict of interest. He tried 19 cases to verdict or final judgment, briefed 23 appeals and argued 10 of them personally. For those who claim this experience is insufficient, I'd urge you to look at the litigation experience of several Trump nominees at the time of their circuit court nominations. For example, at the time of her nomination to the Seventh Circuit, Justice Amy Cody Barrett had never, never argued an appellate case and had never even appeared as counsel of record in a case before an appellate court. At the time of her nomination to the D.C. Circuit, Naomi Rowe had never argued an appeal or tried a case in any capacity. That didn't stop support from the other side of the aisle unanimously. Mr. Mathis has received a unanimous rating of well-qualified from the American Bar Association. I would note that committee Republicans unanimously supported three circuit nominees under President Trump who received a rating of not, not qualified from the ABA. Mr. Mathis is a man of integrity. He has qualification, qualifications and experience. We saw on full display at his hearing. Let me close by noting briefly the support he enjoys within Tennessee. Fred Smith, founder and CEO of Federal Express, headquartered in Memphis, said, Andre is truly a credit to the profession of law, and I believe he'll be as much or more a credit to the judiciary. Van Turner, president of the Memphis chapter of the NAACP, also wrote in support of his nomination. Mr. Turner wrote in relevant part, Mr. Mathis hails from a tough South Memphis neighborhood where statistically he should not be where he is today. However, he persevered, beat the odds, and made it. The great thing about Andre is that despite all this, he always finds a way to get back to his community. I believe Andre Mathis will make a truly superb member of the federal judiciary, 
and I look forward to voting for his nomination.